Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mining Now. I am Gus Miner, your host uh, for this show, and we're joined today by with Nick Tranter from Stride, and we've got something special to, for you today because we'll be able to dive in a little bit on what's going on at Stride, and, and I'm sure you'll be just as excited as we are. Welcome, uh, welcome aboard, Nick. Good afternoon, Gus, and it's really nice to have you here. So, um, so my name is Nick Tranter. I'm the business development manager for new energy and mining at Stride. And in this role, I really try and help explorers gain valuable insights and knowledge into the subsurface for the use of high resolution seismic data. Very good. No, thanks for that. And, and it segues perfectly into my first question, right? So if anybody's ca- yeah. catching us for the first time and they're wondering, you know, who is Stride and where do you come from and what problems are you solving in particular? Maybe we can unpack that a little bit. Yeah. So really, Amit um, Stride was created. We were founded in um, late 2019 to solve the problem of how can we make seismic a lot more affordable and accessible um, for onshore companies who are exploring for different natural resources. And to achieve this, we created uh, this uh, node here, which is the world's smallest, lightest and lowest cost onshore seismic receiver node. Um, but why is this node so important in, what, in, in the whole seismic acquisition process? Um, so nodes com- commonly referred to as geophones. Okay. And when you acquire seismic data, um, there are two key elements. Firstly, you have your seismic source. And this will send, say, it's a bit like dynamite or vibrosize. And this sends a wave field into the subsurface. And this wave field, as it goes to the subsurface, it will start reflecting and refracting off the different geological layers. And when it bounces back up to the surface, this data, this wave field needs to be captured. And it's these seismic sensors which capture that inbound uh, wave field and data. And for a lot of surveys, would have hundreds or thousands of these deployed over an area. And these, these nodes capture that data. We can then process it. And then with the processing, we then create geological images images of the subsurface okay no very cool so so these are basically freestanding right like they're not tied to uh, you know they're not they're not tied to any first infrastructure you're kind of setting them out there and then letting them record as as things are happening so you can get that real-time information and and then what's the recovery process for for these as far as like you know getting that data yeah so it's in um, historically seismic receivers or geophones have been quite big bulky units of yeah. cables hanging out of them. A bit like um, when you're growing up at home, you would have had um, a telephone um, which would have been plugged into the wall and would have had a handset and a uh, exactly. cable connecting it. Um, well, this is like the, um, sort of the new generation, a bit like an iPhone. So it's cableless, it's wireless, and it's really revolutionising how seismic is acquired. It means that you need less people to go out there and to field mm-hmm. and deploy them. You need less vehicles. It's got low environmental footprint. Um, it's got improved HSSE. You have less people, less vehicles. And we can go out there and deploy a lot more quicker and faster than ever before and also retrieve right. them quicker and faster than ever before. And to, to use them in a the field, they're relatively straightforward. You'd normally bury them about two or three inches into the ground. Um, and then it's there continuously recording the data and it can be recording data for up to 50 days. Okay, no, that's very cool. I mean, it, yeah. it certainly solves a problem of people inadvertently cutting cables and yeah. <laughs> and damaging the infrastructure to support all these uh, all these. I mean, I'm guilty of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things that could happen in a, in a mining environment that may not have been predictable, right? To to, to sustain it. So having these freestanding and and being able to to move them around quickly and also avoid that connectivity break uh, because they're essentially wireless yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. So that being said, now that we talked about the technology and how uh, versatile it is. Uh, what kind of case studies or use cases have you put in place that you know have sig- significantly benefited from this this product and and for people to know uh, that are watching the episode that you know this this applies to me? Yes, you know? yeah. So it's um, as previously mentioned, we were founded in late 2019 and we actually come from oil and gas heritage. But since coming to market, we've seen quite strong uptake in the non oil and gas market. So we're now seeing that over two thirds of our business and two thirds of our projects are non oil and gas, of which mining is our second biggest market. Um, we've deployed the system on over 65 different mining projects to date, um, ranging from them um, sort of the um, I know the territories in Australia, um, through to I don't know uranium exploration and um, coal exploration, copper exploration, through to projects in Botswana, Asia, China, Europe, North America, and down into Latin America. Uh, Almost everywhere. Suppose. Yes. <laughs> yeah, global footprint we can say. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So if so if people are watching in right now and they're wondering. You know, how to identify that I'm the perfect candidate to take on your product? You know, who, what, who would that be? What is that? Yeah. What is that? So the technology can really be, be used across the whole of the exploration um, process. So we can acquire different types of surveys to sort different types of means and to provide that subsurface knowledge and that sort of geological and geophysical information to the exploration companies. 
So if you're first looking at an area moving in somewhere and you want more of a regional um, sort of understanding, sort of base and wide structure, let's say, and then we can acquire what we will call regional surveys, the normally in form of 2D transects across the basin, which just gives a bit more of a fundamental understanding of what the and a geological structure might look like in the subsurface. Okay. But as you advance during the exploration um, pr- uh, process, you might want more resolution or more detail in the subsurface. And this is my, when you might bring in you know, a tighter grid of these 2D transects. Okay. Or you might acquire um, or even a 3D survey, which will give you this 3D volume of the subsurface. And what that really allows, it allows the, um, the, 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 sort of the explorer to de-risk the subsurface have a better idea of where I know the target might be so that when they actually look at going into that drilling of the borehole um, or or, um, phase that they should have a better understanding of where to put that drill hole so they have less failures and hopefully better success. No very cool there you go it seems to be a very very versatile product and and I'm sure many that are catching this this uh, you know this episode now are seeing this applies to me um, so uh, that, that being said, how do they get a hold of you? How do they get a hold of, uh, of Stride? And, and what's the first steps in uh, evaluating a project and, and starting things off? Yep. So probably the best way to contact us is to visit our website, stride.io. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, just contact us through the website. Um, we also usually present a lot of uh, conventions and events. So you might uh, you welcome to stop by the booth and visit us there. Yeah, um, something yeah. like PDAC. Yes. Right? You know, here yeah. we are. And, <laughs> and uh, there's certainly a, a lot of events around the world and, and that they can catch, uh, catch up with you. Um, and maybe if you know, what would be the invitation for people that have not maybe considered Stride before? What, what's, the, uh, what's the invitation you want to set out there for them to reach out to you? So in mineral exploration, there are lots of different geophysical methods which are used to try and better understand subsurface. The only reflection size which actually maintains resolution at depth. And it's that extra resolution which provides extra knowledge, which will hopefully de-risk these mining campaigns moving forwards. And to conduct these seismic uh, reflection seismic surveys, stride is one of the best options out there and yeah well there you go you've, you've heard it right, right from nick stride.io i would say go ahead check it out take a look at their website you've seen the product live here nick did a really great job explaining what you know what it does and, and how we can save a lot of you know impacts in your footprint and, and how you're managing your uh, your your data now uh, go ahead and reach out and i uh, thank you for tuning in straight from pdac 2025